Hey all here, OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Xiaomi Geiger. This is a smart Rubik's Cube that uh, can be used for both professionals and beginners alike. For professionals, you can time how long it takes for you to solve a cube, and for beginners, it can teach you the steps of how to approach the problem solving. Now, as always, Xiaomi is very competitive on pricing, and this thing only retails for 32 bucks, which is very low cost for a very innovative idea, in my opinion. So there are accelerometers and motion sensors inside that can detect the position of the cube as you are trying to solve it. Almost reminds me of the Xiaomi Populele, which was their smart uh, ukulele, so they are trying to get into more of these educational lifestyle products outside of just making smartphones. Peeling back the tape here, we can just uh, open up the box like so, and we have just a quick user guide on top. It's still printed in Chinese, but it should be simple enough to understand. Now the app itself does have an English interface that you can choose. Now it almost looks like the Rubik's Cube is wearing headphones, but really this is the charging mechanism. There are two pins that you stick it into for the center points, and then you have a micro USB port on the bottom there just to plug it into a standard charger. Alright, so we can remove the cube from the base there, which is stuck into place. What that means though is there's no micro USB cable that's actually included. Now of course this is a very standard cable so hopefully people will have it, but uh, for charging you do need to have that cable plugged into this U-shaped adapter for it to function. And when you are done, you can just unplug it by applying a little bit of pressure and uh, the whole kind of charging mechanism comes out. It's just using these two very small contact points as you can see there. So taking a closer look at the design of the cube next, again, it does have a slightly irregular shape compared to, say, a standard Rubik's Cube, just because uh, it has to accommodate the pins as well as this docking mechanism, so it cuts out a little bit of the corners on some of these faces to uh, make that possible, but still looks very conventional in terms of the shape and overall dimensions. On first impressions, the mechanism for turning feels very smooth. It's magnetic, so the overall turning action just feels uh, not stiff at all. It feels like it's going to be very easy to make speedy actions and turns. It takes about an hour and a half to completely charge, and afterwards you should be able to use it for at least two weeks or so before you need to recharge it again. You can see that the G for Geiger lights up on both sides, and there's also a mono speaker there that's going to beep to tell you that it's begun the charging process. Once it's complete, it's going to beep again, and the lights will turn off. All right, so the app is called Super Cube by Geiger in the store, and first thing we need to do is connect it. So we're gonna tap on connect. It's gonna search using Bluetooth, and it's found the cube here. Within the interface, I can tap on this top icon to take a look at the cube properties. It's gonna tell me my battery life remaining, 56%, the cube's name, and the number of steps I've taken since this cube was new. So 1,620 since I've already played around with it for a little bit. Now, every single time you make a move, you can see it uh, transition and uh, show up as an update on screen. And there's not too much latency, so it is quite fast in terms of pushing over the update to the computer. Going back to this main screen here, the first icon, which is a rocket, is for solving the cube. So if you ever get stuck and you don't really know how to revert this to a completed Rubik's Cube, you can tap on the quick solve, and it's going to, again, know the state of your cube and uh, solve it in 30 steps or, or less using the algorithm on board. So it tells you to orient yourself, again, using blue on the side here, right, right should be red, top should be the white, we tap on OK, and I can just then follow along this tutorial one step at a time, Now there's also Fancy Solve, which is the second option. Uh, instead of ending the cube in this regular state, you can have it with different patterns. For instance, a certain uh, kind of cross sign on all four of the sides to mix a different color for the king's position, something like that. So every single one of these different designs One thing to note is you have to kind of try out these solves uh, by basically unlocking the levels by following the tutorials before you're able to see an image of what they look like once completed. So I don't really agree that you have to unlock these particular levels. I think they should just be unlocked from the start and then you can tap on it if you want to access a particular design. So maybe they can change that in the future. All right, so the actual games and levels are really in these two modes, the learn and the game mode. So under the learn mode, you can start from the beginning and what it does is introduces the 
basics of the cube. It will tell you a story of how, again, there's six kingdoms, which are the six faces, where the king's positions are, and the corner positions, and then it's also going to teach you the uh, orientation, such as uh, up, down, and the three different layers. And if you complete that, you'll move on to the next, which is to solve a particular kind of design, and then it gets more and more complicated as you go along with the tutorial, and it gets you uh, more familiar with solving things in the top layer, middle layer, and then uh, again, all of the various complexities going up. So that's the tutorial, and under the game mode, we have some uh, additional functions. For instance, there's a, something called a cube mixer, and what this does is you have to collect uh, tokens or coins uh, essentially by uh, having the king collect the token, and then end up in this portal to have them go into the next level. So how you do that is, of course, rotating the cube. Uh, again, we can orient our ourselves by taking a look at these uh, center positions, which is blue, red is over here, and then white is on the top, so this is correct. We can maybe twist the top here to have him touch the gold coin, as you can see there, and now we have to move him all the way to this position for him to go into the portal for the next level. And the next one here is called Cube Crash. So for instance, I can rotate this, the blue over here, and then turquoise on the surface, yellow on this surface, blue is on this opposite surface there, turquoise again, white for instance on this side. So again, it gets harder and harder as more and more notes pop up, but that's the premise of the game. Pixel Puzzle is essentially, it's going to try and give you a specific puzzle uh, for one of the faces. It so that's going to be this side, and it wants you to then make it into this particular pattern, so making this artwork, so to speak. And then once you make an instant rotation, the timer begins. And there, the objective here is just to complete this uh, artwork uh, in as quick of a time as possible. Finally, the fourth game is Color Memory, and uh, essentially what it does here is it flashes different colors on screen. Uh, so red came up first, followed by the white, and then you have to just twist the red sh uh, side or face of the block. So over here, we twist that, and then the white side, which you can see here is over here. So I twist that, and it goes away. And then you get it gets harder and harder in terms of the sequence. You'll have more colors pop up. You have to memorize that and then translate it into movements on the block. And uh, before the 15 seconds counts down, all right, and finally, two last things. The center here is just statistics. It shows a leaderboard of players around the world and their top scores uh, under various games, and you can see where you rank in that global score uh, scoreboard if you're interested. And next, we also have a self-timer. This is essentially for training, so if you're trying to compete uh, maybe in some type of Rubik's competition, you want to see how quickly you're able to solve a cube consistently. After you successfully kind of scramble the cube up to a random uh, pattern, you're able to then tap on start, and uh, it will then begin when, when you make your first move. It'll show you number of steps you've made, and the timer will automatically stop once you revert it back into a fully finished cube. So overall, it's definitely a lot of fun. I think that the software is really well done because it's responsive, the Bluetooth connection range seems to be quite stable, I never lost connection, and the fact that it starts with really the fundamentals, teaching you the orientation, teaching you the terminology is quite important, and afterwards it just gets a little bit harder to test your knowledge one step at a time. So that's more or less it as far as the Xiaomi Geiger Smart Rubik's Cube is concerned. I do think that it is a really unique product, just like many of the other lifestyle-based products that Xiaomi is making lately, just because it's very cost-effective, but also makes it a lot easier and accessible to begin playing around with the Rubik's Cube. So really a great gift idea or just something to play around with. It is quite addictive though, so just be warned that you will probably end up spending hours and hours on this app, uh, but in that sense it really is a great deal considering it's under 40 bucks. You can check out more details in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our unboxing hands-on review of the Xiaomi Geiger, the smart Rubik Cube.